This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. And what about our Super Connectivity Podcast? What about our Super Connectivity Podcast? Hey, cats and kittens! Welcome to Super Connectivity. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Essen. And with me, as always, is the man, the humble, modest man, who is, in truth, the diabolical overlord of this entire universe! Ah, Phil, Phil, me and Parrot. Yeah, look at him being so unassuming. The classic mark of a superman. <laughs> Hello. Anytime you do an in- anytime you do an intro, I'm just waiting for her. I all I hear in my head is oh, my skinny rich friend. <laughs> That's not me. No, and I can't make you my listen, okay. Me no, I don't want to be. This- I don't want to be. I just hear that. I know. But that that's I, me we, all know that's, that's, we all know that's Mr. Ma's man Zor. Yeah, he is he will always be my skinny rich friend. Um but anyway, but yeah, the, that but that's cuz of our history or our pre podcast history. Uh, ah, yeah. anyway, and I always I want to have something for you, Phil, but I've never found that thing for you yet. We have to hang out more. Which now that I have full time job, haha. I mean, jinx it as much as I can. Uh, jinxy, jinxy, jinxy. Uh, I will have time off. I'm going to visit Phil, and we're going to hang out, and I can't wait to see him in April. Yeah. So okay, so here, so here's our big, big thing, big things, to, lots of things to talk about. Um. Oh goodness, and I haven't even given you a list yet, but it's well, I've given you items, but they may have. Let's talk Toxic Avenger. Let's just go completely off comic books for five minutes. Although there is actually a Toxic Avenger comic book. Okay. Legendary Pictures, the good folks who brought us Godzilla again uh, and King Kong again, um, have purchased the rights to the Toxic Avenger from fan fam- favorite Tom- Troma Studios. And I don't even know where to start with this. I really don't because this is like, okay, the Toxic Avenger is a, you know, you know how everyone would always say, um, the Watchmen's an unf- an unfilmable comic. Why would you sell the rights to the Watchmen comic book because it's unfilmable? Mm-hmm. Toxic Avenger is an unfilmable film, <laughs> meaning, and I don't mean that as because I love the Toxic Avenger. I've seen all of the. Uh, it, Things I love each one more than the last, but there's a tra- there's a traumatic aesthetic to the Toxic Avenger, like the class of Nuka- Nukem High. Well, I don't think that can go to another studio. I don't think another studio is going to be able to do anything with the Toxic Avenger the way that Trauma has from kids Saturday morning cartoon to X rated rated ultra violent, um, literally X rated ultra violent. Uh, Superhero fantasy. I mean, hey, hey, Deadpool, you're not the first R-rated superhero film. Who no. was even an X-rated one before you? I've even had this discussion with like Lilith, where like, you know, you go, to, I'll go down the toy aisle, and there's like Joker toys for like little kids and stuff, and I'm like, do you know how many people this guy has been portrayed as killing in like the comic books and the movies and oh, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, but you know, I mean, and here's what I'll say: in some iterations, he's nice. You know, when they did. Mm-hmm. The Toxic Avengers and the Eco Commandos, or whatever it was, um, you know, he it, it, they were able to tone. Down, they were able to GFI the trauma aesthetic in a way that didn't lose the aesthetic. My question for a company like Legendary is, what are you going to do with the trauma aesthetic? It's like here's the trauma aesthetic, and not for nothing, the Toxic Avenger, Melvin the Mop Boy who falls into a vat of toxic waste, is the most trauma thing in the universe. <laughs> How are you going to do anything with it that isn't just the Toxic Avenger? You know, I guess you're going to give the Toxic Avenger a bigger budget, but is that even what you want with that? It's like, you know, years ago, I don't know, have you, have you ever seen the short Hardware Wars? Mm-mm. Oh, okay, see, this is, this is that age differential. <laughs> um, it shows up every now and again. Hardware Wars was a trailer parody. See, back in the old days, film students used to do what are called trailer parody, where you would sort of make a trailer for uh, a, a popular film, but you do sort of a gag version of it. 
Mm-hmm. And this was Hardware Wars, which was Star Wars. And it was basically just all gags about, you know, cheap sci-fi films. And they had a little Cookie Monster, a brown Cookie Monster Wookiee characters. Uh, that, uh, that was fun. It was Ham Salad instead of Han Solo. Uh, <laughs> look, up, look up Hardware Wars on YouTube. It's available. You go see it. But they did a did like a digital remastering of it for like old nerds like me a while ago, and they and when they were doing the digital remastering, the uh, guy said, "Well, you know, we can erase the uh, the wires on your ships there, so you don't see them." And the guy says, "We lit the wires so you could see them." <laughs> <laughs> you don't think we don't know how to hide a wire in a freaking you know film? We're film students. We just made this for a joke. We highlighted it to say, see how, see how cheap everything looks. And I think that's sort of the thing that I think legendary isn't counting. Now, maybe I'm going to be proven wrong. And I hope I'm proven wrong. I would love to have a comic adventure film that is as great as Deadpool, uh, was done by legendary. It'll be fun, but, uh, we'll have to see what they do. I'm just, I'm at a loss that that was something that anyone thought this is the next purchase we're making for legendary. That has got to be a passion project for someone there. Someone said, I want to do Toxic Avenger, but do it right. That guy is the guy who should be fired from this project as soon as possible. You you don't think that, like, maybe, yeah, it might be, someone might be like, oh, yeah, I love the Toxic Avenger, but they're just like, there's potential in this franchise, and, like, there might be, like, you know, this this current generation might not be as familiar with the Toxic Avenger, so they're like, this is kind of fertile ground almost. I mean, not for nothing, he does have a universe. Yeah. It's a superheroic universe. Uh, Apocalypse Inc. is a great villain, uh, especially if you keep continuity with The Last Temptation of Toxie, which I will say is the best Toxic Avenger film. The third one, always the best. Uh, <laughs> Citizen Toxie, I did not like as much that dealt with altered dimension, altered, alternate dimensional travel. That's never as good. I'm just saying. You leave your dimension unless you see what worked with Spider-Verse is that was them coming to this to Miles's dimension. Yeah, you go to someone else's dimension. Suddenly, you're just in someone else's dimension. Not just a mirror, mirror episode. Star Trek already did it. <laughs> Gotta know how you transit is very important in these kinds of things. But um, no, I mean the Apocalypse Inc., which sort of had this cosmic spiritualistic idea of that the evil corporation was actually evil. Like it wasn't just profit motive. It was like, no, we actually, I am actually the devil, and I'm trying to get you to bow down and ser- and worship me. You know that 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 was the whole thing of capitalism as the devil. Which fun story goes back to the Bible, the Golden Calf, actually about that worship of wealth versus actual spiritual goodness. So yeah, I'm not saying there's not fertile ground in the Toxic Avenger. There is tons of fertile ground. Just like there's tons of fertile ground in any great hidden cult icon, because it doesn't become a cult icon unless there is fertile ground there. No one goes to something just to see bad acting. Yeah, I just wonder but, if they, they if they have an original take. They're like, hmm, no one's ever come at it from this angle before. Let's try this. Well, I mean, that would be great, and that would be fantastic. And I'd love to see it. And not for nothing, it's entirely possible that Troma wouldn't spend the money to take a risk on their on their prize baby, the Toxic Avenger. But if you want to spend money and give it to them up front <laughs> to take the risk yourself, you know, it's like, it's like that, uh, what was it, the 90, the 90s or the 2000 Godzilla where they turned him into an iguana with the cast of, um, uh, with Helen Hunt and, uh, the guy who plays a poo. Um, oh, um, Oh, was yeah, that, I forget when it was. It was 90s what, or the early 2000s. 90, yeah, was that like 97 or something? Or? Yeah, but it was basically, it was, it was basically a giant iguana Godzilla and it, it w- did not do well. And I think Troma said, legendary, if you want to make a giant iguana Toxic Avenger, go right ahead. Cause it didn't actually hurt the Godzilla franchise. Toho Studios kept on making Godzillas all throughout that, you know? Like, yep, okay. Okay, guys, you got a fresh take on Godzilla. Yeah. You tell us how that works out for you. So I, I mean, there always, no matter what, it always seems like there's an audience for giant monster movies. You know. I mean, yeah, but you don't want to lose money on it. No, no, no. And that's no. nothing. That's the thing about the Toxic Avenger. They never lost money on the Toxic Avenger. It's like you run over a cantaloupe uh, in a cutscene to make it look like a, a 
uh, kid's head. Um, people buy that. People pay for that. And it, it's okay because it didn't cost you anything to do that. You do a fully CGI rendering of somebody's head getting blown up. That costs money, you know? Mm-hmm. And are you going to make it back on a cult, on what is at its core a cult icon? You know, it's like, it's like if you were going to make a, a if you're going to make any of the, if you're going to make a third sequel to Rocky Horror Picture Show, which there is a script out there, it's available. You have to ask, is the aesthetic going to be the Rocky Horror Picture Show aesthetic? Or is it going to be something that is just monetizing nostalgia, which you can go broke doing? That's the thing. It's monetizing nostalgia as the Lone Ranger. You can go broke monetizing nostalgia. Because it's nostalgia because it it wasn't much when they first made it, and we didn't ask for much when we got it. But now you want to make it into so much more. So that's my view on that. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, other news, and I sent you this link. As it turns out, everyone says, oh, they wanted to pick a name that wasn't used in the comics for Endgame. Do you have any more thoughts on Toxic Avenger before I move on? No, to no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, not so, as it turns out. <laughs> oh. Actually, and actually it's kind of a somewhat significant thing where the title of Endgame comes from. And it is this thing that's just nerdy enough to make nerds go, wait a minute, uh, the title Endgame was the original title, it was the title of the, the book in which we first get introduced to the Squadron Supreme, where they are set to fight uh, the Avengers as part of the Grand Master who has already been in... Actually, I believe it's the Grand Master and the Collector, if I'm not mistaken... Or the Grandmaster and somebody. Um, looking at the article real quick here. I going to say, if it's Grandmaster uh, grand and Collector, a, we have both of them already. There's a, it was uh, John and Saul Buscema with Neil Adams. Um, and Thomas wrote the story. Roy Thomas wrote the story. Because uh, he actually was a big chess nerd. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, it is. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see what it is here. Uh, I know the Grandmaster's in it. Um, I can't remember who's, but both are there. So, and if both survived the snap, and they are immortals. But, oh no! I'm, oh no! 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 Even better! Even better! I forgot who it actually was. It's the Grand Master and King. Oh, who we have rights to? Um, is Kang and Arcane the Grand Grand Master in this film? And are they bringing heroes from another universe? I mean, it would be cool. I mean, it would be cool just to have the Squadron Supreme, but could that be like a giant slap in the face to our uh, Warners from, you know, Disney just be like, let's, all right, kids, sit down, let's, we'll show you how to do it Justice League. Yeah, well, well, actually, I would love Squadron Supreme. I'm actually thinking of like all the Fox properties. Hmm. Another universe. Heroes yeah, coming in. But again, too, the deal wasn't fully done when, when they were making, filming this movie, so. Yeah, but you know, are they gamblers? That's the question. <laughs> I think they're that big of a gamblers with the deal hadn't gone through. They're like, oh crap, we can't release Endgame, or we have to reshoot well, the whole thing. I'm sure the Avengers win. Hmm. And it's entirely yeah. possible that they wrote it to have an intro for something. That if they had to, at the end of the day, just switch back over to the Squadron Supreme. Maybe. Do you know? Oh! You could even do it, Kang and Thanos having this battle. Mm. You know, we assume that the fight's going to be with with Thanos, <gasps> but what if it's Kang comes up and and who is Kang? Who is Kang's grandfather, great grandfather? Nathaniel Richards. Yeah. So imagine now the whole point of this was well, I had to restore balance of the universe because otherwise it wouldn't have existed. And here is, and now I've brought my family into this universe. But no. <laughs> You said you didn't want this thing to be time travel fixing everything. What if it's Thanos for somebody else for, okay, if some, whoever is playing Thanos wins, the unit, half the universe comes back. Well, yeah, I mean, that's obviously what it is. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean, you have to do it where everyone gets back. I mean, time travel doesn't, well, then that's the thing. It's like Kang using time travel isn't going to use time travel to fix it because, yeah. and for what it's worth, if it is Kang, if it is a Kang thing, which is just completely out of left field, well, let's just go with it. Let's run with it. Let's start the memes and rumors now. Uh, if it's Kang, 
then it, he doesn't want time travel to fix it. He actually wants to bring his reality into this reality. He wants yeah. to bring what is missing, which is maybe the Fantastic Four. Mm. Maybe Reed Richards. Maybe Nathaniel Richards. Who knows, you know? <gasps> what if the Fantastic Four is in that soul gem? If everyone else is in that soul gem, what if Fantastic Four is in there? And it's, if it is Nathaniel somehow involved, isn't he? What if he's like, oh, I just protect my family somehow from something? Yeah. Or maybe, or maybe even they've been stuck there in the quantum realm, as we said, which we know that's how that's how Scott survived. Yeah, was in the universe, and that, or maybe, oh, here's one even better. What if they had been trapped in these realms for this this period? As we've often said, what if the Fantastic Four are in another realm, exploring, or like the Future Foundation is? Oh, what if we actually get the Future Foundation? It's actually not that they 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 just been off universe for a while, you know. And I wonder if we're going to get some reference to them in Captain Marvel. That that would oh that would be how that would work in this theory that just popped into my head. What if yeah we see that the Fantastic Four are all big and they're big heroes in the '90s and stuff. Then they disappear, but when they come back, they haven't aged. But meanwhile, no one remembers them because of whatever. Yeah, or plot device. Yeah, yeah. well, because they used something and they went out of the maybe yes. and not for nothing. Maybe that's where Cap- that's maybe that's how Nick Fury knew Captain Marvel would be there to re- get the page because it's not a trans spatial pager; it's a trans dimensional pager. Ooh, yeah! I mean, there's a lot of things <gasps> you, can, you can read into this if you want. Maybe maybe they go old school Captain Marvel. Maybe she's either in the negative zone or the maybe the quantum realm because we can't use microverse. <laughs> it's owned by people. As, yeah, as Deadpool told us. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, if she's in the quantum realm, if she's in... They can actually use... Well, they can they can use negative zone now. Yeah. Although, honestly, Fox didn't use the negative zone. No. What was up with that? It, it, okay, now I'm just thinking about... Jeff I Frank really didn't want Fox to use the negative face. zone. I mean, they couldn't give us a good Galactus. They, they made Galactus a cloud. You really wanted to see you know, the negative I, zone? I am less... Look, okay, I was good with the cloud. Because Galactus only has form when he is appearing to people. Yeah. So that he's appearing to the Silver Surfer, what, he should look like a giant Silver Surfer? No, he's a I, cloud because this is the one time where he gets to walk around in his bathroom with the Silver I, Surfer. Oh, uh, I mean, maybe, I mean, if, even just a swirling ball of energy, would I think would have been more visually interesting than a cloud. Well, yeah, but then someone would say, oh, I think this would have been more interesting than just a swirling ball of energy. Honestly, they should have gone... Here's what I'll say. I think it's that giant guy in a spaceship doesn't look as good as they want. As, as you, It doesn't look as good in your mind as it does in the real world. You didn't want to put on uh, a giant purple suit that day. Okay. Well, you know, but or like I said, it's he's talking to the Silver Surfer, and it's like, yeah. who even knows what the Silver Surfer sees when he sees Galactus? You know, I mean, that's the thing. That's a weird thing about this. It's like, we get that... Because, first of all, let's not forget, he wasn't purple the first time. He was actually green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so colors change. He changes his outfit, and he, like, didn't wear underwear. He was, like, wearing a skirt. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's like, I tell you, those guys running underneath him, they were like, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Galen. Good to know you're Jewish. Uh, <laughs> or maybe now we know you're not Jewish. Um, if either I still, way, it works. If I still gave fancy titles to these episodes, this one would be like Free Balling Galactus or something. <laughs> yes, well, there you go. Um, but that is that is my take on that, is that I, I can live with a clouded Galactus. I can't live with when you have the rights to the negative zone. To call, what did they call it? They called what? it something else. The negative zone? Yeah. No, they call, they called it like the end zone or the or the end dimension. Or... Was that in this? Was that in this? In, this in the trade, the trade debacle. Yeah. Uh, Why well, I have basically scrubbed most of that from my mind. I only saw it that one time in the theater. And I, I don't never I again. Know. <laughs> it's like you know, and you know what, Dr- Josh? Drake, it's great that you apologize now that Stanley is dead. It's and not a very for connectivity podcast. Sorry. What? No, it's okay. Well, what about that podcast? Because we're you know, we're actually we're talking about we're still rehashing. Oh, that man. I'm gonna try mm. to look, I'm gonna try to look it up. So that's okay. I mean, it's 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 over. We should move on. But my point is is what was my point? Kang was actually my point. Um, you know, uh, no. Oh, that they're in another dimension. If they're in the negative zone. They're in the quantum realm. They're in some other universe. Because maybe they went. Well, 
you know, they could, oh, oh my gosh. You want something crazy, Phil? What? You want the craziest fan theory you're ever going to get? Lay on me. What if Captain Marvel lost in her movie? What if the universe got destroyed and then the future foundation went and rebuilt it? Post Secret Wars, it's all Secret Wars and now, and everything we think is history is just something out of Franklin Richards' imagination. I don't, I don't know if they'd go that. I, I mean, that would be interesting, especially that might even work into our theories, like you know that the Infinity Gems have, uh, you know, s- sentience or whatever. You know, their work. You know, when Thanos does the snap, they may, they might be like. Again, the freaking universe can't take all this, you know, <laughs> manipulation and destroying, and you know. So, yeah. Well, like I said, I do think the 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 Infinity Stones have opinion. I think the Infinity Stones want to help humanity. I think some of these Infinity Stones are more cynical. Some of them are not. Maybe you could see the cracks in the quantum realm. Maybe maybe it isn't Scott. You know, like we said, growing out of the quantum realm. Maybe the stones pull him out and be like, here. Go get some people and help. Yeah. <laughs> go, go fix this. Go, go fix cement, this world. Go, go, get, go get your friends. Help us uh, cement the foundation of the universe. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, well, you know, but speaking of Captain Marvel, uh, we do get our scrolls. Here's yes. my biggest question about Captain Marvel. Hmm. I've been reading, I've been rereading our, our, our first appearance of the scrolls. It makes me wonder how much from this book is going to come up in Captain Marvel. And not the least of which is, are we going to get scroll power? Because you, you know they could use that. They could use something, a variation on that theme mm-hmm. to, to explain why we haven't seen scrolls in the MCU now. Because if they kind of get transformed into cows in the Captain Marvel movie, maybe they stay lo- locked in hell. There might be humans walk around that were you know brainwashed into scrolls who were brainwashed into thinking they were human, and then. <gasps> Maybe the maybe the snap unlocks them. Maybe that's an end credit scene. Mm. Everything gets gets put back, but we see some of these scrolls start waking up. Maybe I mean, there's lots of possibilities. My own personal theory is that well, it's, I was actually just thinking they were going to do a lot of scroll, little scroll Easter eggs with like you know, like having like having a scroll cow look at you and you know, being where I don't think they're actually going to turn scrolls into cows at the end. Although I think there is an aspect of this that will become important, which is. When the scrolls say in this that we would rather be anything other than a scroll. And here's my prediction that watch Captain Marvel, watch for like a couple of young recruits who are in the, the group, kind of idealistic, but who also are kind of like not quite sure what the Empire wants them to do on this podunk world of Earth. Um, and sort of have them, uh, Come back to something, you know, and and say, you know, we just don't want to be scrolls anymore. Being a scroll is horrible. Or maybe they could even found Dunkstown in that, as we saw with other scrolls. You know, that maybe the scrolls are saying, we want to escape the scroll empire. It's a fascist dictatorship, yes. The Kree aren't any better. And maybe how this ends is with Captain Marvel and the scrolls saying, you know what, a lot of us just want to get out of this constant cycle of war. This is actually the most fascinating thing to me about this uh, book, though. Uh, the thing turns back human again after a cosmic gray dose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, which also shows that it's the first time he, do, and he, do, he does this before he meets Alicia. Yes. Which means it's not about Alicia. It's about his inability to want to transform because he doesn't want to give up the power of being the thing. Well, I mean, yeah, he it, like you said, it's the mental block, but he's always looking for an excuse. Oh, I got hit by cosmic rays. Oh, it'll make me transform back. Or, hey, I'm yeah. with Alicia. Maybe she won't love me, so I can transform back. Yeah, he's always looking for some, some nonsense. His subconscious yeah. is always looking for an excuse. Yeah, why he can or can't change. Yeah, Beyonder's yes. world. <laughs> yes, and but now he's getting married to Alicia. He's running out of excuses. Mm-hmm. And maybe that means there's going to be a maturity to the thing now. Maybe. And maybe he's going to find he can transform again. Because, I mean, he may still say, oh, you know, now the Future Foundation is back, I can take my serum, I can transform again. And, um, although there was a very interesting aspect of in the, uh, if you read the wedding episode, and everyone go out and read the wedding episode, it was not pulled. It's not a Fantastic Four series book. Oh, so mad about that. Yeah, it's a Fantastic Four wedding special, yes. Yeah, it's a special book, so you had to specifically request it. 
which is useless to you now. I thought because I thought it was like, oh, it's Fantastic Four, whatever. This issue, yeah, yes. it's actually the Fantastic Four wedding special number one. Yes. Um, and we get uh we get her bachelorette party, which is a lot of fun, and she makes this point about Ben about how she's a sculptor and she works with clay and things like that. And that when she touches him, it's like her rainbow. Suggesting there's a lot of touching going on. Hey now. Uh, <laughs> hey now, yeah. But no, but not for nothing, yeah, there's touching going on. And this, that he is so beautiful to her because he is rocks and that's what she worked with. Which is funny because there was a character they introduced that he was dating previously who also dated the absorbing man who... Was also an artist, but she actually was a landscape artist, and that was her whole shtick too. So it, it's just an interesting thing to call back to that. There's ladies that are into rocks, is apparently what they're trying to say. Uh, but they also go on about how how uh, uh, Ben is like the kindest, most caring human being she's ever met, mm-hmm. and like you know, no matter what he is, that's what she loves about him. And I, I'm hoping that that love is going to help him to find a way to find balance in his life. Now, I've always said the reason he doesn't transform is because he does not want to separate his personas mm-hmm. the way that the Hulk and even the She-Hulk has, which we see again in the Avengers book this week. You know, this idea of that separation of personas, you know. Yeah, it's it's super connectivity, so I'm going to go on connection. I but yeah. I know. But I was gonna, I was gonna say, don't go too far, because I want to talk something else about this Fantastic Four issue. Okay, we'll get back to separation of personalities in a moment. What did yeah. you have to say, Phil? Oh, um, the, in the second story where uh, Ben Grimm goes to get uh, per, uh, the permission of the puppet master to marry Alicia. Yes. And they kind of, in the end, you blink and you'll miss it. But uh, she takes control of the puppet master and makes him give oh, yeah. permission. Is that going to be a big um, setback in their relationship, especially with him, you know, being like, oh, I can't transform back? Uh, it could be. I think his, just, I just think the feeling of betray- like, betrayal. I think much like the much like the um, much like the Fred Hembeck piece, which, by the way, oh, thank you, Marvel, for bringing back Fred Hembeck. Uh, the inking on it. Who did the inking on that? Because that is not traditional. Fred Hambeck does stuff inking. Um, Let me see. It was. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it was just a much said, better... it, it just says by Fred Hembeck, so I don't know. No, you know what? He's also. I'm not for nothing. He's getting older. Maybe his inking isn't what it used to be. Um, you know, um, every man understands sometimes as we age, our inking isn't as good as it was in our youth. Um, yeah, it's a, it looks like it's all him, except he had a color artist, but everything else looks like it was him, so. Okay. Oh, well, then, so. But, um, it's, a, yeah, it, it, so, yeah, so we're going to chalk it up to just, you know, a great, a great artist, uh, in his, in his, uh, later years, unfortunately. Styles of um, old, too, you know. Yeah, well, maybe he wanted to do something up there. He's like, no, I want a little more streamlined look. Yeah. I want to really let my pencils pop. Because Fred Hembeck, he's all about his pencils. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, but it was just such a great thing to have a Fred Hembeck bit there with the Puppet Master. <laughs> uh, and in its own right, what I loved best about it was that even though I don't think anyone communicated between the two, it makes makes a perfect end cap to that. Because it's like, no, I didn't do that. What are you saying? I didn't. <laughs> but yeah. And I just love the fact that Alicia's the new Puppet Master. Mm. That she's got her radioactive clay and like, like stepfather, like stepdaughter, she is doing her own manipulations out there, you know? She's not going to let things derail her freaking special day. Yeah, well, now that you say that, are they going to make her the new puppet master? And, and Like a more subtle puddle puppet master, too, not like, you know, the original one, he's just like, oh, I'm evil, ah, you know, but... Well, yeah, be, he's trying she, to take over the freaking world for some Well, reason. yeah, but I'm just mean, is she going to do start doing subtle things like this and be like, no, I'm not evil, I'm just, you know... Just... Just getting my husband to take out the trash. The start, <laughs> yeah, well, that's how it starts, yeah. Yeah, it's like, why don't you take out the trash? Uh, I'll take out the trash, my love. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, hey, wives gotta do what wives gotta do. That's all I gotta say. Um, actually, along those same lines about 
unhealthy relationships. Let's talk about uh, the Mole Queen. Um, oh, yeah. You know, and her, her like, obsession with Harvey. And it's like, the loneliest man in the world rejected me. Do you have any idea how much I think? This is a Gilson old story, if I recall correctly. Uh, well, I, wonder, is, I wonder why you call him the loneliest man. <laughs> it's like, but, it's, but again, it is it is a great take on the idea of people who feel they deserve love mm-hmm. for existing, not because they are a good person. Because she should have said she was manipulating Harvey, she was trying to control Harvey, but she thinks just because she's all pretty and such that she... That this guy should be just thanking her, his lucky stars for her. Well, isn't that like a version of being a sociopath? It's like, you know, when you walk in a room and five minutes later, why does this person love me? Or why doesn't this person find me physically attractive and want to, you know, touch me? Uh. And for what it's worth, I thought that, and here, here's what I'm going to say, I love that this takes place after Soup Squirrel Girl had her talk with him. Because mm. now it's totally in continuity that he's like, no, it, it's cool, man. I understand, you know, look, I don't, I believe in love. I really wish someone would love me. Mm-hmm. And I, but I'm not going to sit, stand in the way, because he had a thing for Alicia at one point, too, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everyone has a thing for Alicia. <laughs> Blind artist, that's like so, so, ah, that's so, she's the original Manic Pixie dream girl, you know. The blind artist from Soho. I just love the thing. Uh, in the, I, love, I just love in the Fred Hembeck story. Yeah, I said, you know, I tried to replace the invisible her with the invisible woman when I, you know, in that original story. He's like, How, why did I think anyone would fall for that? It don't look alike. It worked though. It's like, oh, yeah. you know, it's like it fooled all of it, all of Reed Richards' high tech sensors. You know, <sighs> you know. I just love the fact that in comic books, the artists would. You know what? That that is like the original lamp shading of the fact that all artists draw people who look exactly the same. Well, it's like the Clark Kent glasses thing. It's like, oh, I slap a wig on a woman. Hey, she looks like the other woman. Well, it wasn't even a wig. It was just, you know, just redid her hair. Yeah, um, yeah. At, but no, it's funny you should mention Clark Kent because that was always my biggest thing was that John Byrne drew Superman to look like Reed Richards. It's the exact same face design that he used <laughs> Superman as Reed Richards. Um... He changes the hair of it, but it's the same face. But all art, all artists do that. You have a certain yeah. face you draw. Kirby does that. Ditko does that. Everyone has certain faces that they return to because these are the faces that they they are comfortable drawing mm-hmm. and that look good to them. So it's a way to hang a. It's basically it was basically a way to hang a hat on the idea that all super. It's the same thing with Bucky and Rick. Rick Jones, you know? <laughs> it's like, and Jack Monroe. <laughs> and Jack Monroe. They all look exactly the same. Though when you get to Jack Monroe, it's actually a different artist who's doing... <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the idea that all artists draw these characters to look exactly the same. I mean, when they did um, when they did the original uh, 50s uh, Captain America Comes Back, you know, it was all... La- they had... that Cap had plastic surgery. Yes. It didn't explain why Bucky looked exactly like him. But that's where my clone theory comes in. But so, maybe that's why in the nineties they gave Jack Monroe long hair so you could tell the difference. <laughs> but now that now Bucky has long hair, so Yeah. And no, that's Bucky trying to look like Jack Monroe. Hmm. Because they're 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 conjoined clones. Love love me cap. <laughs> Just no, what it is it's the secret conspiracy of the Bucky clones to, to control superhuman society through sidekicks. I wrote about this, Phil. This is an old, this is an old blog of mine. No. What if that's the biggest conspiracy in the Marvel Universe? What if, like, everyone who's ever been a Bucky was, like, a Skrull? Well, I, I mean, it's along those same lines, but, but that, uh, Rick Jones is actually the ultimate, because he was the one to actually become a superhero. Yeah. And he also eventually gained a Hulk power. You know, he was the one to unlock all the, he was the one who was there manipulating the universe throughout the time. So of the Bucky clones, he was the most successful. Hmm. The real question is, is who is is the first Bucky a real Bucky, or is he just another clone of other Buckys? If we went to a World War One superhero story, if there's if they ever do a Sergeant Steel story, is there a Bucky in his crew? Or unless Bucky was a, was a real boy in the World War Two, but I mean, there's a lot of 
untold stories and yeah, time well, on know, ice not for in, the, nothing. in those decades. I mean, he could easily have been replaced with the scroll. And then when the scrolls came as like Rick Jones and Jack Man- or Jack Manor, they could be like, eh, this guy is a type. Let's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just use face number two. Th- you use face two, 234 a, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, the little like, curl of the hair, but yeah, he used to say, yeah, 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 make it your own, but use the basic design. <laughs> oh, I would love to see a, 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 a Scroll Academy series of just, let look, there's only like six faces on Earth. You, use the, you have the to make it your own. Yeah, if you're going to infiltrate the Avengers, use this base face, but add your own flair, you know. <laughs> you know, you want it to be your own, because remember, shape changing is artistry, it's not <laughs> science. Because if you do it too perfect, that's when they're going to notice. It's artistry that could be life and death. Oh. You know, well, hey, for the Scrum Empire, it always is. Or, um, or that Devil Reed Richards might make you a cow. <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing. It's, like, it's not like Reed Richards couldn't... They should do a really good backstory about how Reed Richards actually purchased a cow farm for the squirrels to live on. <laughs> and it wasn't as stupid as it seems like, but that when he died, it went into receivership. Remember when he was dead? Remember that? Mm-hmm. When Doom mm-hmm. sent him back into the, the Hyborian Age and such, and he fought Conan? That's a, that's another lost tale of Reed Richards. But anyway, now we've got Conan back. It's gonna someone's gonna write that. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, why not, anyway, why not change him into dogs and keep him in the Baxter Building where you keep an eye on him or something? Well, I mean, well, because then it's like they're prisoners. So just standing in the field grazing? I mean, yeah, I know. If, if it is a legitimate situation where they're grazing and living a full, scrollish life in a peaceful meadow, that's kind of paradise. That's literally what the Elysian fields are supposed to be when you die in a hero- in not a, hmm. in a good, with, with a moral positivity on your balance sheet in Greek mythos. You go to the Elysian fields, you sit and you eat fruits all day. But again, ev- I mean, eventually it came back to bite them because Kree Skrull wore those, you know. Yeah, uh, well, not the. Well, basically, you know, basically what happens is someone starts milking the cows and then the scree milk gets into the food supply. Well, no, there was, that was. That was that story. Well, no, the thing was there was four scrolls, but when they, I think it was. Isn't it when they showed the final panel of the scroll cow was only three? Yeah, someone well, they, must have made a mistake. So someone said. So when they were writing Kree Scroll Ward, they were like, "Hey, what happened to that fourth scroll?" Oh, they. Oh, because he shows up in other stories too. Because he was actually in, um, in the Howard the Duck uh, storyline. That's how his shape changing friend got her powers. Was he, he was she, the okay. other one was turned into a duck. So um, I don't know what's official. Who knows what's canon anymore? Speaking of what's canon anymore, who did give the Fantastic Four their powers, Phil? Ah, uh, the um, cosmic cosmic ghost rider. No, no, no. We're not. We're not even. We're not even playing with this Marvel. It's like, okay, so cosmic ghost rider is going to destroy the Marvel universe, like Hem- like Fred Hembeck did years I just, ago. I just wonder if it's going to be like a what if thing where he's just like creating a bunch of alternate timelines, so we're going to get variations on Fantastic Four and Spider Man and. I'm not reading it. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, again, it's a, ca- it's a it's a cash grab. It's a you know, it's a hey, yeah, look at this, it's, look it's, at this, look at this popular new character. Boy, look at this popular new character of 2018. Let's throw him into everything, no matter how mm. how uh, nonsensical it seems. Yeah, I think the lunatics have kind of taken over the sound at Marvel sometimes. Uh, <laughs> they need a good strong hand like Jim Shooter to put this ship right. That's all mm. I'm saying. You know what? Here's what I'll say. You, you hate Jim Shooter until Cosmic Ghost Rider destroys the universe. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, we got a Jim Shooter in there. He's gonna say no. Well, what, he's gonna first off, he's gonna say, "What's the continuity of this?" And then he's gonna say, "Okay, let's work into continuity. Let's find how this story builds into a larger continuity." That's my fantasy version of Jim Shooter. Oh. I don't think Marvel or DC is worried about continuity anymore. Well, you gotta worry about continuity. I know, that, I know. That's your bread and butter. You know, that's the thing. It's like, it's not like, it's not like, here, here's what it is. It's not like the Marvel Universe sprang fully formed from the head of Stan Lee. We like to tell ourselves that myth, but that's not the truth. That's not even Greek myth that uh, mm-hmm. Athena sprung fully formed from the head of Zeus. He ate Athena as a baby, and then she grew out of his head 
as her own woman and pounded her way out. Mm-hmm. It's actually a really awesome superhero story, you know. But the idea is, is that you know you don't just say, oh. It, continuity doesn't matter. Continuity always matters because that's what keeps people reading your book. You know, I think the, MC, what, the MCU proves people like continuity. Well, yeah, not for nothing. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't have to pay Tony Stark all that or Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Not Morton Downey Jr. Robert Robert Downey Jr. You wouldn't have to pay Robert Downey Jr. all that money if people didn't care about continuity. You know, um, but yeah, I mean that's the thing. So I think this is just. I think it's just a hype. I do think it's a hype. I don't think it's going to yeah. have a cosmic effect on me. Or it's time travel, or it'll be set right at the end or something. Yeah, something. It's not going to have a lasting effect. No, but I get the idea. Not for nothing. Obviously, what it was was Marvel PR leaked this story about... Because the first time they did, like, who gave the Fantastic Four the powers? Who did this to Spider-Man? Who did that to these guys? Who really... Who found... Who really found Cap? And it's, um... Not for nothing. And then they, and because everyone had the idea that Marvel is destroying the continuity before they announced Marvel, destro- you know, he destroyed, it was clearly, it was clearly all placed stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, and not for nothing. You cheat me like that, I'm going to be like, you know what? No. Tell me when Frank to Beyonder shows up, you know. Tell me when Frank shows up. Uh, because until Frank shows up, it's not a party. That's all I'm saying. Um, I do want them to do more with this. Okay. Uh, what else is there? You want to talk comic books? No, we talked a little bit about, uh, True Believers. By the way, I gotta say, pick up the True Believers comic books. They've gotten six so far in the last two weeks. They're only a buck. And it actually reminds you that these actually were well-written stories. I mean, they're a little, you know, 60s cheesy, but anything written in the 60s is kind of cheesy. From a, from the year period where people were afraid of communists, for God's sake. <laughs> Um, that's that's that that's not a reason to not read the book. <laughs> but uh, oh, you mentioned Avengers number eleven. Yes, yes, I like that book. That was very good. And again, deals with this idea of people's uh, romantic feelings and people's thoughts about who they are and what they do to impress people. And I like the fact that um, uh, I like the fact that Thor wanted to date Jennifer. Yes. You know, and Jennifer's like, oh, you just wanted to date the Hulk, right? Which is like, oh, you just like my other personal. It's like, no. Because cause for Thor, he doesn't have an alternate. Well, he had Don Blake as an alternate personality, but he doesn't really. In fact, now they've even retconned that. Don Blake wasn't his alternate personality. Don Blake was just some dude who had Thor bonded to him, which kind of screwed up. Poor Don Blake's life, unfortunately. I don't know but, if he was. I don't know if he. I mean, they. I don't know if they kind of retconned that later, but originally when they explained it, I think it was like I don't know if he was even real. I think Odin maybe just even just created Don Blake. I didn't, you know. I did nothing. No. Yeah, just 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 to teach Thor a lesson and be like, okay. Yeah, I tell you, there's a great what if in which Loki is made into Don Blake. Hmm. There's a great what if of that story, and no one's written it yet, but I really want to see that story. Because I think that Loki maybe would have had a lot more to learn about humility. <laughs> and then Thor is the one who forms the Avengers. It's great. It's, it's, there's a lot you can do with that. But Thor is the bad guy. Um, oh, but... Yeah, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh. Um, oh, but yeah, but it's about this. But for Thor, it's like Thor knows there's not a difference between Jen Walters and she Both are yeah. just who she is. He wants to know who she is. And he likes, you know, he's, he says, hey, I'm not going to lie, She-Hulk's hot, you know? She can beat the heck out of me, and I'm kind of into that. I like that super um, strong smashing coat you put on, but yeah, I want to know the real you. Yeah, you know, exactly, and I like that. And then, and of course, that gets her all turned on, and then she turns into the She-Hulk. So, you know, which shows that, Jen, maybe you got some issues with your own emotional, well, ob- obviously... Jen Walters has issues with her emotional state. She's a hulk. she's a Hulk. They all have emotional mm-hmm. issues. Uh, yes. And what about what about Black Panther like forming his own internet trying to form his own international Illuminati? Well, first of all, not the Illuminati, an international United Nations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can call him the Illuminati, except he says this is all out in the open. Um and you know, we need to build a better situation because 
But again, you're, you're there's getting, monsters out there. But again, you're putting together a group of super powered people and saying, "Hey, let's go fix stuff." Well, yeah, well, what he's saying is, and what they're really saying is, we don't know what the other thing on the board is, and now we know what the other thing on the board is, mm-hmm. which is uh, the Squadron Supreme. And man, I mean, is that is that like is that really a shout out to Justice League? Because now it's Squadron Supreme of America. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think it, I think it has been in the past, but yeah, it is. And also, not for nothing, it, it every comic book is from its time, and it's like the Americans and the Russians are kind of colluding to something dark for the rest of society. Yes, um, led by men who want to do good but just are misled because all because Deadpool shot Phil Coulson. Really? I, know. I was going to say, what happened to Phil Coulson? <laughs> Yeah, he got all dark in this episode. Um, not sure how I feel about that. I was trying to. I'm trying to remember. Did they show where Dead, like where Deadpool shot him? Like if he shot him in the head or something, did he maybe get brain trauma or something? No, no, no. It was a gut shot, as I recall. Was it? it I can't remember. Yeah, it, I, I, as I recall, it was not a head shot because it was definitely it was definitely a survivable shot. Yeah. Like if you wanted direct combat, it was survivable, and I still say it was Phil Coulson who was the hobo. Talking to him in that last scene, which maybe means this isn't even the real Phil Coulson. Mm. Maybe they remade a Phil Coulson for such they, purposes. I think they even called it out. I think it's just you know his hero worship of Captain America kind of got tainted by Hydra Cap, so he's like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be putting all our faith in these so-called heroes. And well, I think that's that's without a doubt. Uh, yeah. You know, I guess yeah. I guess this time Tahiti wasn't such a magical place. Nah, was it ever? <laughs> yeah. I'm missing a book here. Right. No, I know I know where they are. They're probably in my in my bag there. I'll grab them in a second. Um wait, I let you talk. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean and it's weird that they never show you who Phil is fighting with. I know, that's what I was like, is 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 it is that supposed to be just that, you know, it's some background figure we never really knew, or is that, are they going to reveal that later down the road? Because they said, you know, wasn't it someone working for Black Panther or something? Yeah, well, they did, they made a lot of suggestions, but they yeah. really gave us very little to work with. I mean, my own personal opinion is, is that it's... I, b- oh. I believe he said that, I believe he said it's male, so we know it's a man. So, but, but beyond that, yeah, they really didn't give us many details. Yeah, second. Hey Ben. Okay, just come up. Okay, I'm in the middle of a podcast. I love you. Just bring. Yeah, so just bring everything upstairs. Love ladies, you, ladies and gentlemen. Father knows best. Okay, bye. There we go. Okay, sorry. I told him he was going to have to do that. Because <laughs> I was doing the time, like, oh, it's going to be in the middle of the podcast. He's 12. He's got his own keys. He can come and, exactly. he can, he can come and go as his please. I don't control my children like that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I? Um, um, Black Panther, who is that? Black Panther, yeah. it's. I mean, it's a reflection of modern politics. I hope it doesn't make it age poorly, but honestly, I have a feeling that Political corruption will exist far into the future, so yeah, I'm inclined to think it's not going to age that poorly, and maybe it, it will age much better than many other aspects of these ideas, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, the fact that the Russian bear sent intentionally because they knew, and that's the thing, it's like the Russians knew that sending Ursa Major, who had spent so many years in the Gulag, was going to destroy the whole thing. Um. And, of course, no one knows who attacked the Raksan platform in Alaska. But, of course, it was... Or, or no, they know who attacked it. They don't know who repelled it. And who repelled it was the Squadron Supreme. Which, of course, is an interesting take on things. Um, hey, Woody, what's up? Okay. Uh... Okay, yeah. Just text me whatever you This is one of the high priests of Conscious Ray from Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. We're proud members of the collective, and you're listening to fellow collectives, the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Enjoy. Yeah, commercial break. Sorry about that. Yeah, we can edit that all out later. 
Uh, I'm sorry. I have children who come home from their That's grandparents okay. during the weekend. And I don't always get to pick when these shows air, you know. <laughs> you know, it's, and I didn't know we were going to go this long. We've gone a little while. So, uh, so anyway, so, but no, but I mean, it's now, now I should stick around because if I could have just said, okay, goodbye, then. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, Black Panther's thing is, is pretty, pretty, um, pretty straightforward, I think. And I think that it was the evil forces of the universe that are trying to disrupt it. So. Yes. Go Black Panther, fight evil. Um, cause that's what the Black Panther does. And I actually, I read, uh, this week's Black Panther in space story. Yes. Uh, which coming in in the middle of it is like, wait, Black Panther's in space now? It, it, it's still really confusing. I don't, they really haven't explained the whole thing yet, but I think Kim and a bunch of the others have lost their memories and. Cause there's like a galactic, and someone was called Eric in it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it's like, it seems like everyone's lost their memories and. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> It was a great read. I loved it. I would love yeah. to see the, the Black Panther space opera next. Um, <laughs> but it just seems weird. It's like apparently the Wakandans had like, you know, interstellar travel a thousand years ago. And it's like, okay, well, that's great. And it's like, I don't put it past the Wakandans to have interstellar travel a thousand years ago. But, you know. But again, it seems a little again, con hungry. Again, continuity, because he's in space. I think. I haven't read it yet, but I'm I'm pretty sure they said in the Shuri book that's like the one of the big points is her taking charge because he's in space somewhere. But meanwhile, in the Avengers, he's here, you know, making plans. Yeah. So, yeah, no continuity. No. <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, well, they no, want there's people continuity. It's just we don't know the timeline yet. But it's like they want people in twenty books every month, and it's like, well, hey, you know, if, you know, if the writer of the main book has them out of the way, it's like, well. Yeah, well, but you no, know, nothing. Else. They've always done that, and it's always just yeah. well, no. This happens before they go to space, but after they get done with this, and that's this happens. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, and like, and, and they write for the trade paperbacks now. Let's be honest. So. Well, yeah, you know, everyone writes for the trades, as they say. Oh, uh, anyway, um, and uh, Bitterroot was fantastic again this week. Oh, cool. Let me just let me. I want. I, can you give me what I'm gonna? I want to go get. Wait, my sure. characters are coming out. I can get the big books, but okay. Um, Bitter Root was fantastic. Uh, Bitter Root is shaping up to be one of my favorite books of uh, this year. Two issues in, so maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but it is just, it's got a great uh, co um, continuity and cosmology that I really enjoy. And um, I really like where it's going. Hey, boys. And. Uh, <coughs> Hey, could one of you grab me my computer bag off of the uh, chair there? Yeah. And just put, put your... I know, you did the door. Great. Okay. Thank you. Just grab me my computer bag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, it all's my other computer. David Walker on the phone. Better read. <laughs> get David Walker on the phone. <laughs> yes, get David Walker on the phone. He's a great writer, and... There we go. <laughs> Better route number two. Here we go. Um... We got a whole thing about the Geno, and apparently there's something else going on with these creatures because they've infected our evil hunters who are like our blade pad padres, uh, pati, pastiche, Ford Sangir, who is saying, who is saying, we just have to amputate, we don't heal. And it is such a great story. I'm really loving Bitterroot. Can I see it? Yeah, here you go. Read Bitterroot, mm -hmm. Tristan. So not the socks I sent them with. Uh, the kids love it. But, yeah, but I will say this. Um, Justice League Dark was my favorite book this week. Ooh. Yeah, even though the champions had Chris Star and the Crystal Warriors, <laughs> which I also read, and uh, Monsters. Just read it. Because they're monsters, and monsters look like cults. So, but the champions were good. Uh, what, if, but, what, if, what issue number champions and what issue Justice League works? Uh, champions number 27. Okay. The Master of the World has now taken over Weird World. Oh. I, was, I was excited that um, Chris Star and the Crystal Warriors were in there. Very disappointed. No Dr. Druid. Huh. Uh, like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I, it's like stuff has been going on in Weird World. I haven't been reading the issues and that's my problem. I haven't been keeping up on things. 
between Mordred and Dr. Druid. There's a lot of missing. Anyway, but uh, just as the dark, this was a fantastic book. Note of point, this guy's just got cast. Hmm. Batman. There is no Batman. You don't yeah. need Batman to be dark. Yes, you do. <laughs> no, you don't. Know. Okay. And, okay. Hey, Give Warner Brothers. Brothers. I hope you're reading this because there is some good Constantine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Constantine basically. Oh god. There's like two basic stories. Okay. So spoilers ahead. Um, you have a fight between the Phantom Stranger. And Nabu, the uh, Lord of Order, or Chaos, I forget which. And in the fight, Nabu realizes he can't defeat the Phantom Stranger, so he imprisons him in the helmet. Oh. Because that's going to end well. Yeah. Let's be honest, that's going to end well, isn't it? And not for nothing, this is my favorite bit of this, because Constantine... Does what uh, what Doc, what uh, Mordu did years ago, uh, which is basically what we call the Faust Gambit, where you're there are multiple demons who have claim on your soul. So if someone tries to take you, um, they have to fight all the other demons who have a claim on your soul. And I'm trying to see where he actually makes this point. I think it's here. Yeah. So he starts carving on his arm to send a message. Which apparently his handwriting looks like stabbing yourself in the arm because later Zatanna says, uh, it's John's handwriting. It's like, really? It's that handwriting? But, uh, basically, uh, so as not to have to fight John Constantine, um, he, Nabu puts John Constantine in his, in his helmet too. So now, the Phantom Stranger and John Constantine are stuck in Nabu's helmet. How does this end well for her? We're getting pranks, so just sit and relax. Ah, anyway. I know, yes, everyone's favorite pizza is Frank's Pizzeria. <laughs> anyway. Ah, story of my life here, Philip. I uh, hope you're enjoying all the domesticity. Okay, uh, anything you want to talk about, Phil? No, we're good, we're good. I got, I got my bitter root, I got my Justice League Dark. Justice League Dark is a really good book. I highly recommend. I didn't even get to the Detective Chimp stuff. Detective Chimp's arc is incredible in this. Nice. And honestly, oh, DC is just leaving money on the table, not making a Justice League Dark movie. Hmm. Between Kirk the Man Bat and Detective Chimp, I want a road book with those two. Nice. You know? Not quite everything else. I want a road book. It, it's, those two mm-hmm. are just so great. And, I don't know why DC just leaves that money on the table. But yeah. Read Justice League Dark and read Bitterroot. It is also really fantastic. If you want to get outside of the Marvel DC universe, read Bitterroot. It is great. Okay, Phil. I guess that's enough for you. Yes. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, you're nodding. You can, you can say just shut up already, Charlie. You can do yeah. that. We, we, got, we got a lot of stuff in. Toxic Avenger, that yeah. Avengers Endgame, Scrolls, Fantastic Four... New comics, the whole Cosmic Ghost Rider thing. We had a lot on this, just this yeah, episode. No, I know we did. Okay, so let's get out of here, folks. How can people reach out to you and touch you if they'd like to? Whoa, hang on. Anyway, if anyone wants to uh, talk to me, you can always email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. And uh, I'm always pimping uh, Capes and Lunatics. How about Super, Super Connectivity has, uh, has social media. Find us on Facebook, on Twitter, at Super Connect Pod. So, uh, yeah, go check us out. Very good. And of course, you can always write to me at old fashioned email way the way I'm out of the impossible and say that super connectivity blog at gmail.com. That's super connectivity blog. Oh, one word. At gmail.com. Of course, follow me on the Twitter. This is a live tweet. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Glove and Dagger and Gotham. Coming back. At Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! There you go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for connecting with us. Cats and kittens. Be super connect with us again next week. Good night. Good night. And now is the time on uh, Connect with you when we can. Now we don't. <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. 
I always dance. I'm a dancer, Tristan. You know that. <laughs> you just don't see me dance. <laughs> you see me. You see me sit on my chair. I don't sit on the couch. Yes. Ah. Uh, I got you.